This is Dr. David W. Kim. Today's video blog is about the aging face, how the human face gets older and what we can do about it. Now I just had the great fortune of being selected as one of the course directors of a national rejuvenation of the aging face meeting. During this meeting, leaders in the fields of plastic surgery, facial plastic surgery, oculoplastic surgery, and dermatology talked about their opinions on how to make a face look more youthful, what makes a face look old, what are the most uh, effective and safest techniques to treat these type of problems. I want to share with you my presentation during this talk, which was predominantly about analysis of the aging face. And as the picture on the first slide shows, it's not just a process where the skin sags. It's a process where there's deflation, where there's loss of volume. And this is really poignantly illustrated by this first picture with the grape and the raisin uh, side by side. Now, why do we care about age at all? Mark Twain was famous for saying that age really is an issue of mind over matter, that if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. But who's the type of person who can really buy into that? Who has the inner peace to really not mind that type of aging process? You know, maybe someone like the Dalai Lama. The truth is most of us do mind. And why is that? Well, there are, are several quotes uh, by famous expansive thinkers who might give us some insight into this. Um, you know, one, it takes about 10 years to get used to how old you are. This is the concept that at every age, you feel younger inside than what you feel that you look outside. Um, Joan Collins was famous for saying that the problems with beauty is it's like being born rich and getting poor. So this idea of a sense of loss. Age seldom arrives smoothly or quickly. It's more often a series of jerks. And then perhaps there's gender differences with age. Mortimer Collins said that a man is as old as he's feeling and a woman as old as she looks. Now whether or not you agree or disagree with that, I think we all can say that aging bothers a lot of people. And that's why there are techniques that have been developed to try to make people look younger. Now the analysis is the most important portion, in my opinion, of this uh, process. And you have to know the problem you're dealing with in order to select the technique and then execute. So this talk is predominantly about analysis. Analysis of the face is nothing new. The ancient Egyptians talked about ideal proportions and a grid system to look at what was beautiful. Uh, da Vinci during the Renaissance tried to integrate mathematics and science to look at aesthetics both in the face and the body, uh, things in, natural, in the natural world. And this has continued in the modern era where many surgeons uh, have looked at facial metrics, measurements, angles, uh, mathematical standards to try to quantify what's aesthetically pleasing. The problem is the faces of beauty seem to change over time. Uh, these are the so-called it girls of each of the decades in the 20th century. And you can see their faces uh, are different. And so what's in vogue in one decade may be different in another era. However, we tend to see that attractive faces from different points in time share certain features. They tend to be symmetrical, they tend to have smooth contours, they tend to have fullness, smooth skin tone, and soft texture. Uh, this is true of what is considered a beautiful face in different cultures, uh, different ethnicities. These aesthetic features are shared not only in faces, but in other things in nature. Um, a beautiful flower, a sculpture, a celestial body, um, a fancy car, and of course in a youthful face. When we see a face, we look for these borders between light reflection and shadow. And when we see smooth contours, we tend to find that to be aesthetically pleasing. Those contours are the result of a combination of some covering over some structure. The covering is the skin, which has variable texture and color and smoothness, and the structure is the volume underneath, predominantly of bone, muscle, and fat. So treatment is to try to make the surface smoother and more uniform in color and to make the contour underneath uh, overall more smooth. This will conclude the first part of this video blog and we'll continue in part two and part three. Dr. David W. Kim, this is part two of my video blog about the aging face. So continuing on to the lecture I presented at our national aging face meeting in San Diego. We were just talking about analysis of the human face. One of the challenges is that the human face comes in so many different forms. When we consider that, we have to think about what are the ways that these different forms change over time. Now, most doctors know that there is a very predictable biology of aging. 
Uh, there are, there's a lot of data about how the heart changes, how the lung changes, and how the performance of the different organs in the body change over time. Uh, a woman aged 25 to 45 to 65 to 85, any internal medicine doctor knows what to predict in terms of performance of the physiology. Now, there turns out there's also a predictable biology of facial aging. Now, though there's so many different types of faces, the patterns of aging change. And this is understandable if you understand the anatomy and the physiology of the face. Overall, the youthful face has abundant volume. It's full. Uh, the tissue is higher. The face looks somewhat triangular. I'll show you a slide of that in a second. And there are smooth convexities or curvatures of the face that create smooth light reflection. The aging face is one of deflation. It's one that the balloon has deflated and there's been descent of tissue. This, the face squares off and there's undulations of contours and shadows where there was once only light reflection in youth. And this is a youthful gal, older woman. The youthful face has a more triangular appearance. The volume is higher. And as that tissue descends and squares off the lower portion of the face, this, the, the face takes on a harsher, more rectangular or square orientation. This is illustrated by Joanne Woodward and Paul Newman in the Butch Cassidy years, smooth, unbroken curvatures, triangularity, and in the salad dressing years, the squared off, harsher shadows uh, that happen over time. Uh, these little puppies uh, show the contour uh, that can cause shadow. Um, you know, a human face doesn't have this degree of wrinkling. Um, but a smooth, unbroken surface uh, tends to have a uh, much, much more youthful appearance. Uh, Maria Shriver, unfortunately, has become a little bit of the poster child of, of aging face. Uh, she has these severe shadows in these areas uh, that weren't there in youth. Um, and this has to do uh, with some weight loss, uh, however, also with the types of volumization and deflation that happens over time. The reasons for this is that the bone degenerates over time and the soft tissue degenerates over time. Uh, the bone actually shrinks and loses volume, but the soft tissue that covers it also uh, loses that volume and then weakens and descends. There have been studies that show loss of bone in the jaw, loss of bone in the mid-face, uh, loss of bone in the area around the eye. Um, this is a CT scan that shows the uh, circumference of the orbit or the eye socket, which has changed significantly and dropped uh, over time. Um, the problem is that face tissue, facial soft tissue volume loss and descent, although it happens globally throughout the entire face, it doesn't happen uniformly, which means that soft tissue may drop more quickly and deflate more quickly in some areas compared to others. And this is a, uh, just a diagram uh, animation of a youthful face and an older face. And again, it highlights that loss of triangularity into squareness. Um, this is a slide that shows the typical patterns of facial aging. Wrinkles in the forehead, wrinkles between the eyebrows, drop of the eyebrows themselves, crow's feet or smile lines, um, and a descent of the mid-face, cheek, um, and jowl area. This type of aging can be explained by the different attachments of the skin to the face. The darker the lines, the tighter the attachments, the looser the areas, uh, the, the, the looser the attachments. And the loose areas tend to drop faster. This will conclude part two of this video blog and will continue in part three. Dr. David W. Kim, this is part three of my video blog about the aging face. This is part of a presentation in the Aging Face meeting in San Diego, which I was fortunate enough to co-direct a couple of weeks ago. Thus far, I've been talking about how the face ages by volume loss, and that volume loss leads to sagging of tissue. The tissue sags different, at different rates at different places in the face, depending on how loosely or tightly it's attached to the deeper structures. And this illustration shows that the face is attached more tightly by these darker areas, more in the middle of the face, and more loosely uh, by these lighter areas in the cheek area and in the uh, mid-face area. Now, there's been also recent studies which have shown that the fat 
is compartmentalized into different spaces in the face. So the fat behaves differently in different regions and may drop a little more quickly in some areas than others. Some areas where the fat is more tightly adherent tend to age predominantly by deflation. So not a lot of drop or descent, but more deflation. And this might happen in the temples, in the cheek, in the area around the mouth, in the area below the eyebrows. And in these areas, restoring that volume is really critical. Misha Barton, famous actress, she's very young. Even in this picture, she's very young. But with all this weight loss, her face is patterned after an aging process. So she's lost a lot of weight in these regions. Uh, volumization would make her look, in my opinion, better and more youthful. There's some other areas in the face where aging occurs by a combination of both deflation, loss of volume, as well as descent or dropping. And that happens below the eyes and the mid face and the cheeks and lower face. And as I said in a previous slide, this happens because some tissue drops quicker uh, in some areas than in other areas. One area is here around the eye. There are these ligaments that contain the soft tissue and prevent it from dropping. But in between these areas, you see the tissue drop a little bit more quickly. Uh, this happens in the mid-face. Um, this mid-face cheek tissue drops more quickly compared to the tissue around the mouth, which stays put. So as this comes down, it deepens the folds or the nasolabial uh, lines around the mouth. This progressive deflation, descent, causes hollowing and shadowing in the face, as you can see from a more youthful to an older appearance. And you start to see shadows. This is an artist's depiction of what Paris Hilton would look like over time. In youth, she has smooth, unbroken light reflection, and in age, lots of these lines and shadows. This is a uh, picture um, of a face which shows bulging fat below the eyes, a, a malar bag, and then a cheek fat uh, pocket, which is separated by these lines of shadow. And this is correlated anatomically to areas where the skin is more tightly bound. Here below the eyes, the skin is tightly bound by a ligament here in the mid cheek, and the skin is more tightly bound along the knees labial fold, which create all of these up and down shadows. Another area where this happens is the marionette line. So you can see in this gentleman as the soft tissue sags where it's light here and it comes down over the jaw, whereas the tissue and skin around the lip and chin stays relatively immobile, you start to see this uh, crease or fold occur, uh, which causes this dark shadow, which you can see uh, caricatured in this marionette. So overall, in summary, the aging face is one which involves volume loss and differential tissue descent. So this is a way of saying that the face loses volume, it deflates, and then it sags, but it doesn't sag equally in all areas. The surface also degenerates. This means that the skin starts losing its luster, the skin becomes more rough in texture, um, and the, the pigment becomes non-uniform. So these patterns of aging are easily predicted by the anatomy of the face, and the treatment should be to restore the natural contours and the surfaces of youth. That treatment can involve a combination of resurfacing, uh, which is to make the skin more smooth, a combination of volumization, which can be done either surgically or it can be done with fillers to improve uh, the, the lost volume uh, that has happened over time, and then repositioning. So traditional techniques like facelifting, upper eyelid surgery to lift the tissue back up is also uh, important for certain areas of the face. And with a combination of these therapies, we can really create a natural, youthful outcome uh, for the aging face. Thank you.